Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> We're finally here. Shrek 3. So this was one of the first movies I remember seeing in theaters because I, this movie came out in 2007. I was born in 2003. So I don't even know how I remember seeing this movie in theaters. I was about four or five, but I, I like vaguely remember watching this one in theaters and enjoying it. I remember watching this one at home on DVD for about two or three years after the fact. But then like once I got to be about five, six or seven, Shrek 3 just disappeared. Like, it just... Bye-bye! Like, Shrek 3 was, like, such dog shit that, to me, in my mind, like, I forgot... I just... Every time I went to go watch a Shrek movie, it was either Shrek 2 or Shrek 1. And then maybe occasionally 4. It, and there was just no reason to ever watch Shrek 4. This is commonly considered to be the worst Shrek film. And, like, duh. It is. It is just dog shit. It's really bizarre how bad this movie is because Shrek 3 was great. And I think at this point, it was just like Shrek was so everywhere that they just literally thought that they could just shit out anything and it would be good. Or not be good, but be successful. And they were right. But it also damaged the brand of Shrek in the sense that Shrek at this point was not this cool innovative funny franchise anymore it was just that money making machine and that was it to the studio and to the audience and so it's like you watch this movie and there are no bits in this movie that made me laugh there's no memorable scenes uh, there's a couple times like I mildly chuckled but like the mild chuckles we're not even that the jokes were funny. It was that they were so embarrassingly bad at some points, the writing, that it just like, I was chuckling a little bit about how bad it is. Like, it was like a cringe chuckle. You're like, shit, that's fucking terrible. Uh, and then that's what you get with this movie. A really, really bad sequel. The plot of this movie isn't actually the worst idea for a Shrek sequel, like Shrek dealing with the idea of being a father. I think where this fails is Prince Charming. Prince Charming, I think, I am trying to think about why he doesn't work as a villain, because I've heard people say that, and I'm like, I'm trying to think about it. And I think what it is, is that his voice is not threatening. He's not supposed to be threatening. His old gimmick is he's handsome. And so him as a villain works really great as the fairy godmother's sidekick because it's a twist on the Prince Charming thing, but the, but also, like, he doesn't really... All of his scenes where he's doing anything nefarious or him just trying to be handsome in the first movie. In this movie, he's not threatening at all. He's like a wimp. And it's also like the characters in the movie see him as a wimp. They don't really see him as a threat either. So... Like, the character's not a threat to the audience or the characters, and so, like, he's not really engaging. Um, and him getting all these villains together, like, seems like a fun idea, but none of them have particularly memorable personalities other than Captain Hook, I guess, but he was just mildly enjoyable, not even that enjoyable. And, and he was just like, okay, we're doing this. Um, and then you get to... Um, you get to some other points in this movie where, like, it's just very odd like that. Um, and, yeah, so that part doesn't work. And then you have Shrek not wanting to be king, which is just, like, I don't understand this plot line. Like, because, like, Shrek doesn't have to be king. He could just make it like literally annoy anyone else like oh he's next in line okay we'll let him be king for like a day then pick somebody else like he could, couldn't he just do that like I don't and it's weird because after the fourth when we get to the fourth one they literally go back to the swamp and that's great because 
it's just weird to see these characters outside the swamp just doing stuff and you're just like well they don't really need to be in the swamp area <laughs> or, or not in the swamp but uh in the far far away kingdom being king i don't know why they chose this plot line it's just weird to me and the babies are like okay I, the way that they twist him being kind of impatient with King Arthur and it being a metaphor for like fatherhood just makes no sense and it's not funny it's really bizarre it's freaking weird um it's just like a lot of weird jokes and bits and storylines that just don't make sense for the characters of the world and they're not funny or interesting I just it's I don't know also the soundtrack of this movie does not feel like it's actually prevalent in the movie like there's so much time in between songs that I don't even notice the songs in the movie and none of them really fit the movie either the only one that really fits is when they play Royal Pain by the Eels because Shrek is doomed with the fact that he's royalty now and, and it's a pain to be royal and that's the name of the song so it it fits actually works for what's happening in the story but for the most part you're watching this movie and you're like what the shit are they doing like it, it just doesn't yeah Shrek Shrek 3 is a very confusing movie in terms of like what it is and what it's saying and what's happening and just who thought of this um, they actually pushed back this movie so that they could make more merchandise. I believe I read that somewhere. So, I mean, that kind of shows the intention with this movie. It was never to make a good, solid Shrek movie. It was made so these weird freaking people of, like, this little land <laughs> of DreamWorks could make, like, a gazillion dollars. It was never made so people could go watch this movie and enjoy it. It was just terrible. And it's just... I. This is literally me every time I try to watch this movie. You want to know how bad this movie is. I, I watch it. I'll, I'll try to watch this movie. And I'll pop it in. I'll just turn it off. This time I actually finished the movie. Which is like... Like I actually finished the movie. <laughs> but like every time I just turn it off. Because I get to like that dream sequence where the baby's throwing up on him. And I turn it off. And I just, I don't keep watching it. Because it's just like that, it's just terrible. It's an un... Shrek 3 is so bad it's actually unwatchable to be honest. Like, the whole time I was watching this I was almost falling asleep. Because it's just like, so bad. Who made Shrek 3? That's all I can tell you. Shrek 3 is bad. You knew it was bad. And I'm surprised how long this review is, but honestly, I just legitimately just wanted to talk about that this movie is for a second because I hated watching it, and I hate talking about it. Like, you know, Shea Frillis Productions has a great uh, video series about Shrek, and the fact that he just, just doesn't even mention Shrek 3 after time is perfectly fine because it's just like, it's not worth mentioning. This is garbage. So that's Shrek 3. Next week we'll do be Shrek Forever After and then we'll move on to Puss in Boots. And I will be watching Puss in Boots in 4K because I ordered the 4K. I'm excited about that. So stay tuned for that review.